One of the awesome things about a tool such as Flutterflow is that you can essentially design, build, test, and launch your app all without writing a single line of code. And that is because all you really have to do is drag and drop various elements on the canvas, connect to an action, and before you know it, you have an app that would have taken you a long time to write if you were doing that from scratch by writing code. Another nice thing about Flutterflow is that it allows you to customize pretty much all the aspects of your app. Not only can you change the font, the colors, but you can also change the different design elements, how they're stacked together, the spacing, and really make your app look exactly how you envisioned it when you first started to build it. Now, having said that, even though Flutterflow has a lot of little design elements, has a lot of templates, has a lot of components and lots of ways of customizing those components. There are many situations when you wanna use a special effect inside your app that you simply can't do with Flutterflow because it doesn't have that specific component or template that you can use inside of your app. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you five amazing and powerful widgets that you can include inside your Flutterflow apps and by leveraging these components inside of your apps, not only are your apps gonna look more professional, more intuitive, and more user-friendly, but you'll also be able to make more money because people are gonna be attaching a higher value to your apps. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps I'm gonna be showing you in today's video are gonna be available to view and or clone from my Patreon page which you're gonna find in the description below this video. Now, the first widget I wanna show you is a very, very simple widget that you've probably seen all over the web, all over the mobile apps, the desktop apps, pretty much everywhere. And that is an autocomplete widget. So here I have a simple text field here and it has a starting text called starting text. And let's say I start typing a letter C. I'm gonna see a choice of different items that also start with the letter C. So let's say I type H and I type I and A. So I'm looking for the word China and this is what it's showing me. So I can click on it and now the word is displayed in my input text field. I can do the same thing uh, with the letter A, R, G, and I have a choice of a country Argentina. I can click that and it displays it here. If I'm not specific, then it's gonna show me all the possible choices that have that letter. And this is a very powerful and intuitive widget that no doubt you have seen pretty much everywhere. And it's great because it essentially saves a lot of time, sa saves a lot of hassle uh, to your users because they don't need to fill out the whole thing. They can type, they can simply start typing and it's gonna auto complete it for them, right? So I can pick this choice and it's right here. And if we go back to Flutterflow, this is the widget right here. And this is actually this widget from PubDev. I adapted it to Flutterflow. And so you can include this widget. And apart from the typical width and height, it also expects a list of suggestions. This could be a list of strings, a list of integers, a list of pretty much anything. So in this case, I'm using this autocomplete suggestions and I'm taking it from local store. So if I click on it, you will see we're using local state. And if I go into my local state right here, this is the list here, right? This is just a list of countries. And so I can add, let's say another country, I can add Costa Rica here, go back here, I can reload my app. I can delete this and start typing Costa Rica and I'm gonna have it here. And so what's nice about this widget is that you can send it a list of anything, pretty much. In this case, we're using local state, but you can send it a list from somewhere inside of your app. You can send a list from Firestore DB. You can send that list from anywhere, which makes this widget super flexible and it's super easy to adapt it to your needs. Now, the next widget I wanna show you is a really, really cool one. And this is a widget you can use in situations where you wanna show a user how something changed, so how an image changed. Maybe you're applying various filters, maybe you're doing some image manipulation, maybe you're just displaying two different images. And this widget is called before and after, 
And the way it works is that you specify two images here and then it has this little slider. So this is the before image and this is the after image. So I can do that, I can scroll, and this is the after image, okay? And I'm sure you have seen that in various web apps and various mobile apps. This is a really, really nice touch. You can do the same thing horizontally here, and you can do the same thing vertically like this. You can have kind of this vertical uh, type slider, or you can have a horizontal slider. And if we go back into Flutterflow, this is the widget right here. And this widget accepts, well, in this case, I have two of these. I have two different types here on one page. You can just use one if you want. But I have this one that has a vertical uh, type slider. And I have here that with a horizontal slider. And each one of them accepts the after image and before image. So here I have an after, I have before after and before and so all you have to do is specify the url of the two images and it's going to be displaying it and it's also going to give a user a slider so it's going to essentially show one image while hiding the other image really really nice effect you can easily implement that inside of your flutterflow apps and so if you are building an app and you need to show the before and after image you can easily do that using this widget the next widget I want to show you is a very cool horizontal slider that can control some values on your app. And this is the slider that we're using. It's called a vertical weight slider, but it can also work horizontally. And so the way this works is that if you drag it, it modifies the value inside of this widget, but it also interacts with your app. And so it can modify values that you have set inside of your app. And so here I have a simple kind of a Pomodoro timer kind of app. I actually did a similar app in one of the previous videos. A lot of you asked me to, to talk more about this specific widget. And so the way it works is that you include this widget and it has various parameters. And it also connects back with maybe some kind of values that you have set inside of your app. So we can remove this parameter because it's, it's redundant in this case. I just have it here for debugging purposes so that I can see it's probably being set. But because I have it connected to this parameter, I don't really need to show both of them. So we can easily remove that. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. But if I drag it, you see how it's updating them. It's updating this one, obviously, because that's part of the widget, but it's also updating it the other one. And I also have some functionality that is not part of this widget where we can hit play and it does a countdown. Okay, so it does a countdown of this value. I can pause it, I can pick another value and I can do another countdown. And so if we go back to the app here, this is the widget here and all of this is part of our regular app. It's just when we interact with this button here, it's talking to this widget and then this widget is talking back to this thing here. And so if we want to remove this thing, that is very, very easy. You can just come here. And all we have to do is remove this first container that displays the value of the slider since we are already doing that anyway. So if I remove that, and so here's the widget without that redundant text field. And so you can drag and drop it. The only text field that's going to be changing is this one right here. Now, what's nice about this widget is that it accepts various parameters. You can specify the minimum value, the maximum value, and also the interval. So in this case, we have an interval of one, and that way when you drag it, it's changing it by one, right? Each of these lines here is essentially one here. We can change that interval to maybe five or to 10. We can change all the other values to serve this widget to your specific needs. I also have a local state field name called task time, which sets the initial value and also the value that's being changed as you're sliding the widget. So all in all, a very, very powerful widget that you can use in a lot of different scenarios. Whenever you need something that has this horizontal kind of slider, uh, such as a Pomodoro app or apps of that sort as well. Now, the next widget I want to show you is a very, very cool animated number effect. So in this case, we have a countdown, but we also have another variation with a kind of a time that's being showing the current time. If we go back into Flutterflow, 
you will see how this widget is implemented. So on this page, we have two of these widgets that do two different things. So this is a countdown. And in this countdown, I adapted this widget to Flutterflow. And so it accepts three parameters. You can send it seconds, minutes, or hours. So I can say, well, I want 60 seconds and I want, you know, three hours. And now it, it previews three hours and 60 seconds. That's doing the countdown. I, I can also do one minute and 30 seconds. And so now it's showing a minute and 30. It's doing a countdown. I can do five minutes and 30 seconds. So now you have a countdown. And this widget right here doesn't have any parameters. It's just a widget whenever you want to display maybe a time somewhere, uh, how the time is changing. Really, really cool effect. And obviously you can modify it further depending on your specific needs. When I saw that widget, I was like, this is a really, really cool effect. And these are really cool widgets that perhaps you can show a countdown before a stream or before a certain event takes place. Really nice widgets. I definitely look forward to using them in the apps I'm going to be building. Last but not least, I want to show you a folding card widget, right? So here we have a simple kind of container card. And if I click on open, it opens up with a cool animation and now it displays another card inside that you can obviously modify how it looks. And this widget is called folding cell. And if we go back inside Flutterflow and we check out this widget, I actually adapted it just like all the other widgets to Flutterflow. And so here's the widget. You specify the width and height and you also specify some text on the outer widget and some text on the inner widget. So on the outer widget, we have text one. I can change it to, let's say, outer text. And then inner text, I can change it to, let's say, inner text. And so if we go back to our app, we do an instant reload, we should see those changes there immediately. And here is our newly reloaded widget. It says outer text. We can click here and we see inner text. And so right now you can change the kind of text that gets displayed on the outside and the text that gets displayed whenever you open this widget up. If there is some interest, I will also make this widget even more customizable and will allow you to change things like this color, maybe the font and other things. But right now, this is an amazing widget that has this really cool effect. It's very, very similar to one of Flutterflow's built-in widgets. So Flutterflow has this flippable card that essentially changes the whole card. So instead of, you know, in this case, it kind of opens up, it still keeps this one, but adds another little widget here. Uh, the Flutterflow widget just changes the whole thing around. So while it's very similar, it's still completely different behavior. And so there are situations that I can see using the built-in widget, but there are also situations where you can use this widget. What I really like about this widget is that it's kind of like opening a postcard, maybe in situations where having to do some congratulations or a birthday or maybe uh, something special event, you can have a, an animation via this widget that kind of opens up and has this really cool effect. I really, really like this effect. And now you can use that inside of your Flutterflow apps. And remember, if you are interested in viewing and or cloning this exact app here and using these widgets inside of your apps, the way I have them built here, the way I customize them for Flutterflow, you can do that by joining my Patreon. On my Patreon, you will be able to find all the apps that I build. So you have the direct link to all the apps that I built you can simply view and or clone them, making it super easy to use all the functionality that I have here inside of your apps. And not only will you get access to this specific app, you'll get access to all my Flutterflow apps, as well as some of the other apps I did in various other no-code builders. Plus, you'll get tons of other content, including Q&As, behind-the-scenes content, live streams, as well as my beginning masterclass series where I go in depth talking about different topics having to do with no code and having to do with Flutterflow specifically. I actually did a mastermind 
not too long ago. It was a very long video that covered a topic a lot of people had issues with and were struggling with. So if you have not yet joined, definitely do so. It's an easy way to get more knowledge with no code, get more knowledge with Flutterflow, and take your development up a couple of notches. Plus, by joining the Patreon community, you will be supporting the channel and supporting my work, and that is greatly appreciated. And so that is all for today's video. I really, really hope you've gotten value here. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below. And, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you in a future video.